All right, so I've went ahead and copied down everything the leak code tells us. Basically, we're given a 32-bit integer and we're told to reverse the digits of the integer. And don't worry about the 32 bits right now. We'll get there in a sec. First, let's think about what this means. So this is one case that they gave us. We're given the number of one, two, three. And so to reverse that means putting the three in front, two after it, and the one in the final place. And we get 321. For the next case, the negative 123, this one's different because it's a negative, but it's actually pretty much the same exact question. We put the negative sign out front, and then followed by 3, 2, 1. Finally, another example of a kind of an edge case would be 120, and so to reverse this, we put 0 out front, 2 in the middle, and 1 out back, but this 0 doesn't really add anything to our number, so we get rid of it and our result is 21. So let's take a look at the algorithm we're gonna to use to solve this problem. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make a results variable. But actually, before we start talking about that, one thing that's super useful for pretty much any integer related problem is the modulus operator and the division operator. And that's because with the use of the two, we can basically get every digit in X. And so to get four, we'll say X mod 10, and that equals four. And in order to get access to the three, we need to basically divide X by 10 to get 123. And now we can repeat the process and say, this X mod 10 equals three, divide by 10 to get 12 and the process continues and that's how we're going to get access to all the digits. And so knowing that we can get the last digit by modding x by 10 and we'll divide it by 10 to get rid of the 4 and now let's think about how we're going to get this 3 here after our 4. It won't be as simple as just dragging it in because Java doesn't allow us to append integers to other numbers and so Using addition, we need to think about a way to add 4 to 3 and somehow get 43. So basically, we need a way to shift 4 over to the 10th place to open up the spot in the 1's place for a 3. And we can do that by multiplying results by 10 and just adding our 3, which gives us 43. And now we can do the same for 2 by multiplying this by 10 and adding 2, which gives us 432 and divide x by 10 to get rid of the two. And lastly, we just need to do it for the one. And so we'll say 432 times 10 plus one is equal to our final answer, which is 4321, which is exactly what we want. But sadly, it's not as simple as that because in our process of adding, we need to check for integer overflow. And so let's talk about what that is. Numbers in Java are stored using a system called two's complement. In our problem, numbers are stored using 32 bits, but and in this example, they're stored using four bits. The, that's what the four zeros here are, but the same idea applies. And so we see that zero, zero, zero represents a zero, which makes sense. And add one, get a one, and continue that all the way until seven. But here at seven, we see that we have an issue because we add one and get negative eight. And that's just because of the way the numbers are stored using two's complement. And so basically, each time in our problem, we're going to check to see that if we undid our last action, do we get the same number as before? And so here, for seven, we would add one, and we would get negative eight. And then in our solution, we would take our, a negative eight, undo our last action, which was plus one, so we would minus one. So it would be negative eight minus one, which is negative nine. And we would see, does that equal seven? And because in this case it doesn't, we would know that we had integer overflow. So let's start coding. All right, so just like in our written solution, we're gonna begin by creating a results variable. And in this case, we're gonna initialize it to zero. And because we're gonna to need to check that if we undo our last action, do we get our previous answer? I'm gonna keep track of our previous answer. And we're gonna say, wow, x does not equal zero. We're gonna grab that last digit and call it cur, which we do by modding by 10. We will also divide x by 10 to 
get rid of that last digit. And then we'll say result is equal to result times 10 plus cur, because we're shifting it over. And then we're pretty much done, but because we need to check for overflow, we're gonna check that if we undo our last action, do we get our previous answer? And so to undo our last action, we're gonna say result minus cur divided by 10. If that does not equal our previous answer. And if this happens, we just need to return zero as stated in the problem. Otherwise, all we need to do is say prev is equal to result to update our previous answer and come down here and return result. And let's see how that works. Accidentally added an S to my results. Try again. And there we go. We're faster than 100% of online Java solutions and have a memory usage that's less than 96%, which is definitely not bad. Now let's take a look at the time and memory complexity of this. So we have a while loop going through the digits of X. And so because inside our while loop, we're doing stuff that's constant time. All we need to see is how many times our while loop gets ran and it gets ran proportional to the number of digits in X. And so we'll say it has an O of N runtime. And so for memory usage, we're gonna say that we have constant memory time, especially if we move this initialization of cur out here. And now all our variables are getting initialized outside the while loop. And so our memory usage will be constant. All right, so that's how you would do the reverse integer problem on LeetCode. If you learned something, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. And as always, have a nice day.